You've tuned in to another edition of The Break Room, a weekly conversation about how the city of St. Augustine works from those who do the work every day. Hosted by the city of St. Augustine's communications director, Melissa Whistle, The Break Room offers a closer look at the different city departments and provides updates on current and upcoming projects and events. And now your host, Melissa Whistle. Welcome to The Break Room. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Melissa Whistle, Communications Director for the City of St. Augustine. We are back in studio this week with Buddy Shawland, the city's building official, and we have a very special guest with us, Quality Engineering and Surveying, our FEMA Flood Mitigation Assistance Consultant. Our Program Project Manager is Kimberly Riles, along with her team members, Nancy Banalis and Zach Gibbons. Kim, Nancy, and Zach, welcome to The Break Room. Thank you for having us. We're glad to be here in the City of St. Augustine. Um, We've been very busy this last week with the workshops Mm -hmm. um, for flood mitigation assistance. We had a very good turnout, and we also had a lot of homeowners that called in that wanted to complete site visits. So we did a a lot of site visits out in the field, and we got a a lot of... um, Progress. Progress, yes, yes. Uh, The homeowners are very excited that we're here. Um, They want to learn about the mitigation opportunities that are available for the city of St. Augustine. And so we've been very busy uh, going around and spreading the news for flood mitigation. And and so that's just it. I'm going to get Buddy to chime in here just real quick for a second. Buddy, remind the audience, remind our listeners, how did we get here with quality engineering? Well, with the consistent flooding that we've been having lately, uh, we, the, Jessica Beach and myself have been going out and talking to homeowners and trying to give them advice on about flood mitigation. And we've seen a lot of people that want to do something to elevate their property, elevate their structures Mm -hmm. to try to do something. So we've been telling them about the flood mitigation assistance program and we decided, well, there's a lot of people that are interested in it. We probably need to get somebody to come and help us to do this. Because that's not your job. No, not not, not really. That's (laughs) not really your job. But we brought quality engineering in. And Kim, you mentioned going out to see our homeowners you talked about the workshops. Before we go back and talk about the workshops and some of the progress, Nancy, I want to ask you, You, Kim said you guys went out into the community. You've actually physically gone to people's homes? Yes. So we had a couple Wednesday after our last workshop, and we had some on Thursday and as well as some on Friday. Um, we are seeing that flooding is definitely an issue here in St. Augustine, mm-hmm. um, and the homeowners are very eager to be mitigated. And mitigation for us is what, essentially? It's mitigation for... I'm sorry, Kim. Mitigation for us here in St. Augustine is going to be elevation of your structure or mitigation reconstruction. Okay. So I'm going to lift my house. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) It sounds so simple. It is simple. Um, Now, of course, we are working with FEMA, so the process will be a little bit timely. Um, But the good thing is, is that there is hope at the end of the tunnel so long as this application does get approved. So, Kim, you've been doing this for how many years? Um, Just a few. Fifteen. Okay. I've so you've, you've done a few. <laughs> yeah, we've done a few. Um, we're, we're out of Louisiana, so we are no strangers to flooding, mm-hmm. of course. Uh, we um, have hurricanes, tropical storms, flash floods, just a little rain outside, and we're flooding. Right. So um, the flood mitigation assistance program uh, started for us back in 2008, 2009, um, and it wasn't that popular. Now here in 2019, 2020, 21. Um, we've got hundreds, if not thousands, of people that just are ready to go. Um, FEMA is increasing the cost on this program every year. So as long as we're participating, FEMA knows that this program is good. So we want to show from the city of St. Augustine that we have folks out there that are flooding and that need to be mitigated. Um, and I think we've demonstrated a lot of that last week with um, the just the number of people that have come out and contacted us that we've gone out and seen. And that was... To Buddy's point, we were hearing from the residents, what are you going to do to help us? How can this city help us? And God bless Buddy and Jessica, who did try to help residents, and we, we helped a couple. A few, we, yeah. Yep. Yeah, um, but it was very it's an, a daunting task when you have other duties as assigned that are your primary job. So, Kim, tell us how this, give us a little bit of... FMA, flood mitigation assistance, kind of that overarching, what's, what do people need to understand about the, the program as itself? And then we'll come back and talk a little bit about that process too. Okay. So the program is, is designed to mitigate your structure and that's any action taken to reduce the risk of flood to your property and also to yourself. Um, so the 
process, uh, well, the program, FEMA created the program to help those homeowners that are repeatedly flooding. So if you've had a claim or two, um, we definitely want to know about it. And we want to be able to look at um, your your flood insurance policy. The biggest criteria for this program is the National Flood Insurance Program policy, and it's a standard policy through the NFIP. Um, we know that a lot of homeowners are self-insured, so we are urging folks that if you want to participate in this program this year or next year, you will need to have a National Flood Insurance Program policy. Okay. Um, most of the folks do, so that is good news for us. Um, and those policies are kept up to date. So that is our biggest our biggest sticking point for for participating in the program. So you mentioned this year or next year. So if so, we're going to try to get as many folks in this year, whatever that means. You'll tell us what that means. But I can also come back next year if I do or I don't get in. It's ongoing. How does that work? Right. So the program is an annual program, and it will come around every September 30th. At least that's the goal for FEMA mm-hmm. is the opening of the period September 30th. Um, we are doing outreach as early as August. August right. We're here now. Mm-hmm. Um, and once we do that outreach, we gauge the interest. We um, work w- closely with the city to make sure that homeowners are hearing about the program. Once we have that interest, um, we start putting together packages. Mm-hmm. And so we've done a very good job um, with the city this year putting the information out on the website. Um, everyone that we visited last week had a packet in their hand already, so they printed it from the website Great. or they got it from the workshop. Um, so they have the packet that is due. Um, that's called the homeowner documentation packet. Um, they would need an elevation certificate if they're participating in elevation. Uh, for mitigation reconstruction, those are other criteria. And we are going to post all of this information up through the City of St. Augustine's website <laughs> so that all of that information is readily available. Um, They'll need contractor quotes for that elevation, and they'll need photos of their property and their insurance declaration page. So those are are really it. Um, There should not be any out-of-pocket expense for homeowners other than the elevation certificate, and we ask that you wait um, until October 1st to get to start getting those elevation certificates. That should be the only out-of-pocket expense to participate in the program. Um, It's a voluntary program, so you can participate now um, all the way through the process if you decide this is just not it um, you can pull out but we hope that you don't do that Um, so we want to mitigate as many structures in St. Augustine because the more we do that the more resilient we are as a city. If you're just now tuning in you're listening to the break room I'm Melissa Whistle communications director for the city of St. Augustine I've got in studio this week with me uh, Buddy Shaw in the city's building official And also our consultants from Quality Engineering, our project manager, Kimberly Riles, with teammates Nancy Banalis and Zach Gibbons. Uh, Kim, we're talking about the timeline of that, and you're talking about there was no out-of-pocket cost. Just to recap, so if I get my paperwork done, which I'll make sure to tell the folks who are listening, it's citystaynog.com forward slash FMA. We do have a homepage story on the website, but we're going to give you a real easy to find landing page called citystaynog.com forward slash FMA. We've got those forms there. You also did those workshops, which we did record one. So folks can also go back and listen to the workshop as well as looking through your slide deck from your presentation. You were mentioning the deadlines. October 22nd, I don't know if you mentioned it yet, but we were talking about it. That's kind of your timeline that you need people to have their paperwork to you correct? so that you guys can do your magic to make sure that it's all in order. Right. And that's why we're kind of getting started now in August. That gives homeowners um, about two months to get the documentation together and get that submitted into us. What we'll do is take the documentation and make sure that we have all of the T's crossed, I's dotted, Mm -hmm. and to make sure that no one needs assistance from us. Um, and if you do, we'll be out. We'll be out around town. We'll be here to go take your pictures, whatever you may need, um, collect that documentation. Um, and then once we have that information, we will be working with the city to put the actual application together that will be sent to the state. Um, the state's deadline to us is November 12th. Okay. So from October 22nd to November 12th, we've got to really get it together, um, put all of this into a nice, neat package and send that off to the state. 
the state will do their um, they'll do their checks and balances and make sure that the application is complete before it's sent off to FEMA in January. Okay, and it, there is no guarantee necessarily. You you process this. I may go. I might go in on it. My next door neighbor might. One of us might. One of us might not. There's. I know that there are um, percentages of funding reimbursements. Can you talk a little bit about some of those specifics? Does that get a little bit in the weeds? It it is, but not really. Um, so there there are several different cost shares with this one program. You have the severe repetitive loss. Those folks that have flooded repeatedly, and we can make that determination through your flood claims history. Um, those would be funded at 100%. Um, the repetitive loss structures, which have two or more claims. And we can also look at your claims to make sure you qualify, uh, would be 90%, 10%. And then if you do not fall in either one of those categories, you're still eligible. Um, even if you just have the one flood or you have one, you know, one flood and a smaller claim. Like an incident. Um, yeah. Right. We can um, look at that documentation just to check and see. But it would be, if you don't fall in the SRL or RL category, you would fall as a, 20, a 75 25 property. Um, and so FEMA says that anyone that is flooding, we want you to mitigate because eventually you're going to end up in those pots right. of SRL and RL properties. So we want to take the action to mitigate you. Um, so as long as you have flood insurance, you're eligible to p- participate. Um, the application itself is going to be sent as a whole to FEMA from mm-hmm. the city of St. Augustine. So FEMA is not necessarily going to go in and cherry pick those properties out. Um, it's either all or none. Um, they will give us the opportunity if if they decide not to select this application, they're going to tell us why it wasn't selected. Okay. And it may be an, a money thing. Um, we have $160 million available nationwide. Um, when you think about that nationwide, it's not terribly much. It's a lot right. of money. Right. Um, but we're going to go after as much of it as we can. So the more people that participate, uh, the higher chances we have of, of getting selected. And it doesn't matter if I live in... Lincolnville, Davis Shores, Fullerwood, downtown. It, as long as I've flooded, I don't. I, it doesn't. In other words, it doesn't have to be just this one little pocket of the neighborhood. Right, right. So anyone that it, that falls in the jurisdiction um, mm-hmm. for the city of St. Augustine, uh, we are able to include you in the application. And is there anything important or significant to commercial versus residential, historic, non-historic? Do those things play into the factor? So we are encouraging all residential, all commercial properties, um, historical, non-historical. Okay. We have kind of a mix right now. We have a good bit of folks that have historical properties that are in those historic districts. Um, we also have just a, a couple of properties that are over 100, over 120 years Um, They may not be in the historic district, but they are falling into the category of over 50 years. Um, So what we'll do as the city is make sure that we follow the rules that the State Historic Preservation Office has set in place, and we will include all documentation that we can to get those submitted to FEMA. Man, buddy, I think you're glad they're here. Yes, I'm very glad. (laughs) (laughs) And and thank you to Buddy because you did get – we did get one selected – Yes, we did. Uh, in the last year. But the one who didn't, is that property eligible again? Yes, it's still eligible. Okay, so that goes right back in. So, um, Nancy, what you found was people are excited to be in the program. You just want everybody to... Yes, yes. If you currently have flood insurance through the NFIP and you have flooded, please let us know. Excellent. And that's what you're here for. And you guys are coming back. We're coming back. We we'll be kind back. of ran out of time. We did, uh, yes. So, <laughs> and we're running out of time on our interview. Yes, so I'm going to do we'll this. <laughs> I'm going to say you'll be back. So tune back in if you missed any part of this broadcast or you want to go back and catch any of it from the beginning. You can find it on CitySanogRadio.com. We do have the interviews on the website. You just need to go to CitySanogRadio.com. The information about the FMA program is at CitySanog.com forward slash FMA. If we want to keep you informed about what's happening in and around the city, and most importantly, that you hear it here from the people doing the work and making it happen every day. Remember that in order to stay connected, you need to be connected. Be sure to like us and follow us on any of our platforms. You'll find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at City St. Aug. Until next time, thanks for tuning in. You've been listening to The Break Room, a weekly program addressing projects and programs offered by the City of St. Augustine. Join us each week as the city's communications director, Melissa Whistle, has in-depth conversations with the people who make our town work to meet the needs of our community. 
The Break Room is produced by communication specialist for the city of St. Augustine, Cindy Walker, and engineer by Flagler College communication major, Anne-Marie Gresham. See you at this time next week for another edition of The Break Room.